Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. SpaceX was supposed to launch Transporter 2 yesterday and got to T-10 seconds before a hold. They then scrubbed and tweeted, hold called due to range being no go, teams are setting up for tomorrow's backup opportunity. So, with the scrubbed launch yesterday, SpaceX launched the Transporter 2 mission today instead. Zero. Ignition. And lift off. The booster which flew this mission, B-1060, then landed successfully for the eighth time on the landing pad at LZ-1. This is SpaceX's first return to launch site landing of 2021. Uh, that was as smooth as I'd seen it. Uh, we had phenomenal shots all the way through the landing burn. You heard the sonic booms. This booster has landed for the eighth time. Uh, that is the 89th recovery of an orbital class rocket. I wanted to share this tweet from Musk on the scrub yesterday. He said, unfortunately, launch is called off for today as an aircraft entered the keep out zone which is unreasonably gigantic. There is simply no way that humanity can become a spacefaring civilization without major regulatory reform. The current regulatory system is broken. Also in relation to the scrub that happened because of a range violation this article was posted. It says a spokesperson for the FAA said the agency is investigating the incident which involved a helicopter. The system worked and kept people safe, the FAA said in a statement. Yesterday, Musk spoke at the Mobile World Congress about some Starlink and Starship stuff. Michael Sheets posted a bunch of tweets with things Musk talked about. This one says, starting in August we should have global connectivity for everywhere except the North and South Poles. We are on our way to having a few hundred thousand users, possibly over 500,000 users within 12 months. Another one said, Starlink is operational now in about 12 countries and more are being added every month. In another tweet it says, from a technology standpoint, Starlink is quite different from prior low Earth orbit constellations, it's very advanced. No one has this level of sophistication with phased array technology for satellite antennas. Some more Starlink info from Musk, we are getting close to launching Starlink satellite version 1.5 which has satellite interlinks. There was also some information about Starlink cash flow. It says, probably before we go into fully positive cash flow, SpaceX may have spent at least $5 billion on Starlink and maybe as much as $10 billion. It's quite a lot. In addition to this, Musk added, over time it's going to be a multiple of that and about $20 or $30 billion over time because basically it is a lot of money to get Starlink operational. In another tweet from Michael Sheets it says Musk notes that SpaceX is still losing money on the Starlink terminal which costs more than $1,000 each currently. We are working on next generation terminals that provide the same level of capability, roughly same level capability but it costs a lot less. Musk also talked about Falcon 9 reusability. This tweet says Musk notes that some of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket boosters are slated to fly 20 or 30 times as the company builds upon its reusability success. I want to share a tweet posted today by Chris B. It says Roscosmos concerned with potential Progress MS-17 conjunction events 3.5 hours before the docking. Starlink 1691 satellite approximately at a distance of about 1.5 kilometers and fragment of a Falcon 9 launch vehicle launched in 2020 at a distance of about 500 meters. Over in Boca Chica, the 6th level of the vehicle integration tower was stacked. The 7th integration tower segment was rolled out to the launch site also. Here's a view of progress with beams being added to the orbital launch mount. I wanted to share an article related to the SpaceX and Cameron County fiasco to do with unauthorized road and beach closures. This article talks about SpaceX's response to the complaint. 
It says, while SpaceX said the district attorney's office appears to have been fed misinformation that led to certain misunderstandings regarding certain facts it committed in a June 17 response letter to cooperating with the office and being a responsible and compliant corporate citizen. The cryotank shells at a propellant production site are continuing. An interesting unknown structure has been spotted being constructed. Crews were seen partying in the High Bay Bar for Elon Musk's birthday. The new booster transport mount was prepared near and moved into the high bay. A new upper bulkhead was spotted outside next to the sleeved aft section. The first Raptor vacuum engine delivered to Boca Chica was spotted. Tyler Gray posted a picture of the vacuum optimized Raptor on Twitter with the caption three of these engines will be used to power the Starship vehicle through space during orbital flights. Is this engine for Ship 20? Musk responded and said it is. Looks like we can get 378 second ISP with this version of Raptor vacuum so over 380 second with some improvements down the road. We've been given a lot of info recently on the first Starship Super Heavy orbital flight, here is a new FCC filing. SpaceX has apparently applied to fly 6 Starlink terminals on the Starship orbital flight. There is also a start date for this filing of August 1st, so, as expected, looks like there won't be an orbital flight in July. In addition to the tweets we saw about what Elon Musk said at MWC, there is also some Starship information. This first tweet says, we are going to do our best to do an orbital Starship launch attempt in the next few months. Then, often if I want to see what the latest progress on Starship is, I just go on the internet because members of the public have telephoto lenses pointed at our vehicle. Also, Musk said, certainly we'll have an orbital capable booster, an orbital capable ship and the orbital launch site all be ready within the next month or so. In response to Musk's new orbital flight target, Michael Baylor posted a tweet. It says Elon provides a more realistic schedule for the Starship orbital attempt than the previous July target. Elon Musk responded and said there is the internal goal if things go right which needs to be aggressive. Obviously some things will not go right internally and there will be external issues too. That said, I think we can stack an orbital ship on an orbital booster in July. As SpaceX rapidly work towards an orbital flight with SN20, SN21 is already in the works, here's the lower bulkhead. The super heavy booster number 2 upper stack was mated with the upper half of the booster. Super heavy BN2 was fully stacked yesterday. I wanted to include the road closures from the Cameron County website. Not sure what it's for but there is a road closure scheduled for tomorrow Thursday 1st. I have to say thanks once again to Tyler Gray who has been out in Boca Chica filming the great content. Mary has now also returned from her holiday and been filming out in Boca Chica again so thanks to her too. Also thanks to the NASA spaceflight team working behind the scenes on their great videos, live streams and other space content. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.